Are we starting? Our last speaker is uh, Michael Reed, and he's going to be talking about geometric algebra and Julia with Grassmann.jl. Uh, hello. So um, my talk kind of um, continues off where the previous talk was. Uh, so I'm looking at the mathematical foundations uh, of ge uh, geometric algebra and differential geometry. And uh, it's a bit of a mathematical talk, so if it doesn't make sense to you uh, right now, it's all right, because uh, you can just go home and take a look at the repository, try out some of the examples to build your intuition about it, and then revisit this uh, presentation where I'm going to pointing out to you right now what's, what you should be paying attention to and what's really important about it. So uh, what we have is a uh, set of packages that I made. So the uh, kind of the, at the bottom or at the root of it, there's a direct sum package where we have a vector space type and we have an abstract tensor package which just has an abstract type for tensor algebras which has the vector space parameter. And then we have the Grassmann package which is uh, kind of the anti-symmetric super algebra uh, that we're gonna be talking about. And then the, there's a Leibniz package which is kind of a prototype I'm currently working on for, for doing a mixed symmetry uh, algebra with differential operators. And then um, I also made the reduce.jl package. Uh, it's not required uh, for this. You can also use SymPy or other algebraic packages, but this is just uh, another one that I made. Uh, so the direct sum package uh, works like this. We have a vector bundle type, uh, which is a subtype of a manifold and we want to encode some important information that we want to carry around at, at pre-compilation time for, for all our like algebraic operations. And so we have a dimension of the space, we have a, a parameter for specifying the projective geometry that we want to deal with, and we have a parameter for the metric tensor, and also a, a number for the order of differentiability that we want to talk about. And so this is just a tuple uh, of a parametric type. And so you can just, you can do a direct sum operations or intersections and unions if you want to work with some kind of sub-algebras. And so, uh, there's also a dual space. And um, at the bottom you can see I have a, I just have a specific kind of notation that I use for my basis elements. Uh, so I'm just showing that there at the bottom. So uh, what's the most important thing about this uh, geometric algebraic product? Uh, it looks, it's going to look a bit unfamiliar to you at first, but if you are familiar with the multiplication of complex numbers or quaternions, this is actually the same product, but this is a generalization of that to just general tensors. And uh, what's, what's important about it is that it's split up into kind of multiple kind of sub-components uh, having an anti-symmetric and a symmetric part. And um, for the symmetric part, we have an orientation that's uh, due to the anti-symmetric parity. And we have a intersection metric, which is a weighting that we apply to the whole value when we do the product and it's based on the intersection of the indices of the anti-symmetric part. And then we have a tensor product of the anti-symmetric indices. And what's uh, important about that is that the indices are actually, um, the, the indices that you keep are the symmetric difference of your two elements of, of the indices. And then we also have the symmetric part where we actually um, use a multi-set sum operation on the indices. So it's a little bit uh, more complicated than, than in the anti-symmetric case. And uh, so uh, the symmetric and anti-symmetric uh, aspects of this are extremely important. And so we can just define a symmetrization and anti-symmetrization operators, which are just averaging operators that uh, characterize the, these properties. And uh, so these products satisfy the associative law and distributive laws for general multivectors. 
And so we can, uh, we're going to build something more familiar from this uh, throughout this presentation. So uh, we have the exterior product, which is based on the equivalence relation on the tensor algebra, which uh, is, characterizes the anti-symmetric tensors. And then we also have symmetric tensors, uh, which are characterized by, this, by the symmetric part. So, uh, but the important aspect is that the anti-symmetric part always has an orientation, which is basically a factor of negative one to, to some power. And we have the uh, Leibniz derivation property for each of the symmetric basis elements that we wanna, uh, that's just the only requirements that we're talking about right now. And so um, this geometric product, uh, from that we build an orthogonal complement operation. That's what we call the grassmann poincare hodge complement. So there's different names for it in different, uh, in, in the history that there's, you know, many different people who've discussed it in a different way. And in this case, uh, I'm taking the geometric product of the reverse of an element with the volume element, which is I. And uh, in Julia, we can just use uh, uniform scaling for I, uh, if you're interested in that. And so if you have a grade P tensor, then the uh, orthogonal complement would be an N minus P grade tensor. And uh, if you have the exterior product and the complement operation, then you can construct another operation called the regressive product. And this was already discovered you know, 150 years ago by Grassmann but it's uh, not very well known. So, um, <clears throat> the, uh, so that's called the co-product. And from this, uh, it satisfies a De Morgan's law, which, which is uh, related to the orthocomplementary ortho propositional lattice from quantum logic, for example. Uh, so from that operation, we can build a tensor contraction operation, which is quite general. And uh, uh, that's what this, uh, boundary operators, but the boundary operator is actually when we use a vector field and a tensor on, on, as the arguments. And uh, that satisfies the Poincaré lemma, which is an uh, important property for this uh, operator. It's a linear operator also. And uh, another interesting thing about it, I think, is that the Leibniz Taylor series coefficients, uh, you can examine them by kind of taking the exponential of the boundary operator and applying it to a tensor field. If you're interested in extracting some partial differential uh, derivative information. Uh, additionally, so if there's a exterior differential operator, uh, which is D. And if you take the orthogonal complement of that, that's your curl basically in three dimensions, for example. and uh, then we have, I, I'm uh, recalling here the contraction operation that I mentioned previously, which is the boundary operator. If you take the negative of that, that's what's actually the co-differential. And so the differential and the co-differential are Hilbert adjoint hodge Ram operators. This is a quite special property that I think people should know more about and investigate. And uh, you can, uh, in, with the Julia package, you can explore that. Uh, also, with the, uh, we have the Dirac operator, and this is actually just a sum of the differential and the co-differential. Uh, that, that's all it is. And uh, it's, it, also, it's just a geometric product. So these things are all the same thing. Uh, and uh, another important part about it, I think, is that the Dirac operator is not commutative, uh, whereas the Laplacian is uh, so that, that's another interesting fact. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so we have also a projective geometry that we can do with conformal geometric algebra, uh, where we define uh, additional basis elements, which is the point at infinity and the origin. And these are theoretically just obtained from uh, taking regular basis elements that have the opposite orientation and their metric. And uh, the result is that if you multiply, if, if for example, uh, th these would square to zero, unlike regular basis elements. So if you use these, for example, to compute the, what, what the Laplacian differential uh, operator would look like, it would contain a Minkowski plane in it, which is the infinity and the empty set sign there together. So 
the Minkowski plane also has special algebraic properties that are unusual in the tensor algebra, so these had to be specially handled uh, in, the, in the type system, but uh, it's, it's all built in there, so it's, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about how it works. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, the Julia package is just about 3,000 lines of code for the Grassmann package, and it's fully general. Uh, so, so the Julia language really helps out with with making a fully general algebra that can do the caching and the pre-compilation and everything. And so we get the quantum logic with the Grassmann-Hodge dual lattice. We get rotational algebras with Lie groups and the exponential map and the logarithm. We get conformal geometric algebra with the Minkowski plane. And so what I'm experimenting with currently is also the mixed symmetry algebra with the Leibniz operators. Uh, which is a Leibniz a JL package as a kind of a prototype at the moment. Uh, and as mentioned in the previous talk, we uh, have the chain complexes from the hodge duram uh, homology that's based on the differential and the contraction operations that we were talking about. And from that, you can get things like Betty numbers and the Euler characteristics. And most important, uh, you, can, you get the Dirac-Clifford product uh, and also the hodge laplacian which are all deeply tied together. So I think this is all really interesting stuff that people should know more about, and the Julia package uh, makes it accessible uh, just to like build some intuition about it. It's also pretty high performance, but uh, it's, I didn't have enough time to prepare a detailed talk to kind of explain all that, so maybe in a future conference I'll explain some of the internals of it. Questions? So I'm curious if you could give your, like, uh, other than the imaginary numbers for, for us mere mortals, what are some, uh, like, specific uh, things which would fit into this, uh, your, I mean, I understand, besides, <laughs> I'm like the imaginary numbers is almost the only thing that I that I understood could fit there. So could you yeah. give us some other examples of what so would like fit here? You, you can generalize. You can add more imaginary units because the imaginary unit is is a grade two tensor, and so you uh, you just take the outer product of two grade one elements. And if you're in a Euclidean space and you take the geometric product to square it, it squares to minus one, and so uh, that's just if you have if you're in a two-dimensional uh, space, then you just have two indices, so you just have one imaginary unit. But uh, if you're, let's, let's say, in three-dimensional space, then you have enough indices to make three imaginary units, and that would be your quaternions, for example. Uh, so it can generalize to any number of dimensions, actually, so it's, it's not limited to complex numbers or quaternions. It's, you can also get higher-order tensors beyond just, you know, grade two and so on. So. Thanks again, Michael. That concludes the session. <laughs> <laughs>